greatest of all creation, a man whom Allah Almighty had completed his outward and inward splendor. Let's not deny it and bury our heads in the sand and pretend that outward appearance doesn't matter. It does matter. And that is why Allah Jalla Jalaluhu decreed that all of the prophets and messengers would be upright and would be handsome and would be the fullest of men, physically speaking and inwardly as well. Allah knows this is the nature of man. He judges, she judges by appearance. How did he look alayhi salatu wasalam? I share with you the words of those men and women who saw him. And you will notice that between the lines, you read not just a description, but you read obsessive love. Look at the words of Ka'ab ibn Malik, a companion who saw him. What did he say in description of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? He said whenever the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would smile, his face would illuminate. His face would radiate as if it was part of the moon. Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he would say the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was white in complexion. It was almost as if he, Allah had fashioned him from silver. Jabir ibn Samura, he would say, I once saw the Messenger وسلم, during the night when the moon was full and the sky was clear and I began to look at him and look back at the moon and look back at him and look at, back at the moon. At the time he was wearing a red garment and I came to the conclusion that he is far more beautiful than the moon. What about the description of Al-Bara? He would say, the Messenger وسلم, was of perfect human proportions, meaning not too tall, not too short, not too wide, not too slim, of perfect proportions. And I once saw him wearing a red garment in my life. I have never seen anything that was more beautiful than him. Alayhi salatu wasalam. A man whose face was round like the moon. His color was as some have described was a harvest moon, whitish with maybe a vanilla tint to it with a reddish tint as well in his cheeks. A man whose eyes were intensely dark and the white of his eyes were intensely white so that when he was looking around, you know that he was looking at you. His mouth was perfect, very wide, so that when he speaks, he is clear and eloquent. There was no ambiguity in his speech. His eyebrows were finely arched and his eyelashes were long and his hair would reach down to his earlobe, sometimes to his shoulder. Alayhi salatu wasalam, the finest of all men. Umm Sulaym, la ilaha illallah, would carry a container carrying or catching the droplets of sweat falling off the forehead of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he was taking his siesta nap. He woke up and he saw her there with a container catching the droplets as they fall from his head. He said, Ummu Sulaim, what are you doing? She said, Messenger of Allah, we take your perspiration and we mix it with our scents and it becomes the most amazing of all fragrances. Alayhi salatu was salam. Anas ibn Malik who served him for 10 years. You want a description? Take it from a man who served him for 10 years. He said, in my life, I have never felt any silk or brocade that was softer than the palm of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And in my life, I have never smelt a scent that was sweeter than the natural body scent of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Jabir, he would say, one of the younger of the companions. It was the habit of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he would come out of the masjid, the children would come running to him. And so he would come to them individually and pass his fragrant hand over their faces one after the other. Look at the rahmah, look at the mercy. Jabir said, and I was waiting and it was my turn. And he passed his hand over my face. He said, I will never forget how it felt. The coolness of it smelt as if he had just removed his hand from the bag of a perfume seller. Alayhi salatu wasalam. Cold and subhanallah al azim scented. And perhaps the most remarkable description we have of him has come to us by virtue of a, of a woman. It's always going to be the case. But she was an old woman, alhamdulillah, give her an excuse. This is the name of an old lady called Umm Ba'bad al Khuzaiya. She said, I saw a man of a glowing appearance, glowing, radiant in his face, perfect in his proportions. He was not ruined by an, a big belly, nor did he have an overly small head. Rather, he was a very handsome man. His eyes were intensely dark and his eyelashes were intensely long and his voice was very husky and there was length to his neck his beard was full and then she said azaj meaning finely arched eyebrows and then she said even when he was silent subhanallah she is describing his silence as well when he was silent he was so dignified but when he spoke he was overcome with grandeur and, and splendor he was the most handsome and beautiful of men from a distance, but the sweetest and most gentle from up close. 
and his speech was so nice. It was so clear. You didn't think that his speech was too long, nor was it too short. His speech were like pearls falling off, cascading from a string. A man of perfect proportions. You did not think that he was too tall, nor did you think him too short. It was like looking at three splendid branches, but he was the most beautiful and radiant of those branches. And then she concludes by saying he had companions who were surrounding him. If he instructed something, they rushed to fulfill it. When he spoke, they paid attention to every one of his words. He was well served and well attended, although I never saw him frowning once, nor did he miss out anybody in the gathering. What about us? What about us? Where do we fit in all of all of this? Alhamdulillah, he has not neglected us. And he has something to say about you. He said that there will be people who will come after me. There will be some people after me who will love me so intensely that they would be willing to exchange their money and all of their family for a single glance at my face. He said they exist. He said they come after me. If a person was to say, figuratively speaking, I have a photo in my pocket of the Messenger of Allah وسلم, I can only give it to you on condition that I strip you of the last penny to your name. Your phone, your shoes, your clothes, your business, your glasses, everything to your name. Your car, your bike, nothing. You're going home on the street. And you will go home with no mom, no dad, no brother, no sister, no wife, no children. For what? For a 